<laughs> New South Wales has some of the toughest tracks in Australia. And we've done a stack of them. But it's also a diverse, beautiful location that's got a lot more to offer than rocks and wheel lifts in the air. We see just how deep it gets and it's up over the bonnet. For the next four weeks, we're taking you with us to the Blue Mountains. You! <laughs> oh! In search of jaw-dropping scenery. Mandangua. Our rich history and culture and some of the best four-wheel drive tracks you could ever expect to do with an off-road caravan. The grunt of the V8, it was exciting. Yeah, baby! <laughs> One of the steepest roads I've ever driven on. Hang around for four big episodes as we bring you the best of the Blue Mountains with your 4x4. Welcome to another thrilling your 4x4 adventure. Our journey begins in Oberon, nestled on the edge of the majestic Blue Mountains. Here, we gather our convoy for the journey ahead. Unfortunately, Mike from Trek Hardware couldn't join us, but he rides along with us in spirit. Day one, your 4x4, back in the mighty Prado again. So out here in the Blue Mountains, we're pretty lucky. We've got a few local guides. We've got the awesome Nick from ARB. Should be a great week with Simon and Alex and all the other lovely people we've met so far. I feel really lucky this is my first trip with your 4x4 and to spend the week with all the different industry experts is fantastic. This morning we met with everybody at Reef Reserve, which is outside a little town called Oberon. And this time I've got Steve Zemmert joining me. He's our customer advocate from Sydney. We're out in the beautiful Blue Mountains, west of Sydney, which is a bit of a backyard for me. I cut my teeth in four-wheel drives out here. G'day guys, it's uh, Tristan and Mitch here from Piranha. You know, we thought that the first trip was so good that we might as well come back a second time and just try and give Simon as much trouble as possible. You've done your rear CV. Rear CV. Rear CV. You know they tricked us. <laughs> you f <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yep, hello, yes, sexy yes. boys. <laughs> you hear me? Am I there too? G'day, I'm Mark from Mickey Thompson Tyres and we're here in the lovely Blue Mountains right at the moment. And I'm Zach, also from Mickey Thompson and yeah, we're having a crack at that. We live in the Blue Mountains so this is kind of our backyard and this was unexpected, the nice weather. It was great to sort of start the day off with the views that we had. Everyone, thank you very much for coming. Great to have you here. This is the start of our Blue Mountains adventure. We've got a great week culminating with one of my favourite spots, which is the key thing that brought me back here. So years ago when we filmed through this area, Nick brought me to a very special place called Mayangu Maragu. And there's a beautiful cave area through there with some Aboriginal paintings. Mayangu Maragu. Mayangu Maragu. 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 Yes. We've got some of the best areas that the Blue Mountains this region has to offer. They're going to be absolutely awesome. Really, really looking forward to it and great to be able to share it with you guys. So guys, thanks for coming. Let's get into it. Thank you. I don't know why they're clapping, but that's really nice. Thank you. With the introductions done and dusted, we embark from Oberon and venture into the breathtaking expanse of the Blue Mountains to tackle the infamous six foot track. Once we had met the group at the reef reserve, we headed towards the Janolan State Forest. This is mint. This is mint. Look at this spot. Paradise. The roads in were pretty good, not just on the dirt, but on the bitumen as well. Really scenic, big hills, big trees. The first part of Boggy Creek Road was closed due to logging, so we were able to zip around on the tar and come back in from the other side. We came to Black Range Road where we let our tyres down and Simon was saying this is where it's going to start to get a bit more fun. It's oh, a big one. Hey Steve, great to have you back for another trip. Yeah mate, it's good to be back. Oh, I've spent so many nights camping up in this area. Oh, absolutely spectacular, I love it. I feel privileged like Steve, like the rest of the crew. This is my back garden, so plenty of times been out here, but there's plenty to do that I haven't seen, so really excited. 
this is just like old times when we used to just travel through and do a lot of four-wheel driving with friends and camp and find out what the Blue Mountain's all about. Simon found a little detour and thought Alex would be a good guinea pig. Always on the lookout for good things to do and explore that aren't necessarily what you plan to do. Simon's lined up a pretty steep rock face. Pressed every button I can find. Let's give it a go. He's done really well. He's found good areas and really sort of shown us that any vehicle can make it up there. And it's not always the car that gets you there. It's a driver as well. Oh, you! <laughs> awesome. Great drive. <laughs> that is wicked. Love it, love it, love it. I thought someone was going to unhitch his van. Next thing I've seen, the Iveco with the Fort Mine following behind. Front and rear lockers on. Let's see what we got. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Woo! That's how we do it. <laughs> Simon says, right, do you want to go and have a look at it first? And I thought, I'm driving that today. <laughs> These blokes are on drugs. This being the swan song for the mighty Prado, got to do all the crazy stuff. Let's have some fun and hopefully not break anything. Coming up there, the Prado handle it, no problem. Little bit of wheel spin on the rocks. Got up there, no dramas whatsoever. Yeah, big ups to the Piranha car. Managed to easily pull us through it. Now obviously Piranha, we don't need a second go. It was so perfect. <laughs> really steep climb up an embankment. That got us back onto the learning curve, especially for me with the new car. Does this thing even have a gearbox? Where are they all? Supposed to be 10 in there and we could luckily find one. Tyres are definitely capable. It's the guy behind the wheel that's got to be in control. Second go round, nailed this time, not a problem. Let's rock and roll. This is spectacular. Magic. Blue Mountains. At its best. At its nicest, absolutely. It was really cool to actually bring the vans out on a track like this. It was a lot of fun. We're coming up on top of the amazing ridges. We get to see all across the Blue Mountains. And then we're down in the valleys where it's just growing and teeming with life. But Mitch, how nice is that view? Absolutely stunning, mate. Breathtaking. Absolutely. A bit like Simon, takes my breath away. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. That man and his shiny head are just magnificent. <laughs> and you how beautiful is it down through here? Are we driving through that, Simon? We're going to cross it three times in the next couple of minutes. So come on down, we're just about to hit the river now. Awesome! <laughs> it's definitely a great little touring track for anyone starting out four-wheel driving. It's always nice to have water crossings. They're really quite relaxing. Oh, this is just a divine. How nice is this? I hope we're scratching the surface with these water crossings, but hopefully there's many more during the week to come. It never ceases to amaze me that you get off the beaten track, you go exploring in your four-wheel drive, and you find these absolutely stunning little areas just goes to show. Get out your four-wheel drives and have a go. This is absolutely beautiful, Simon, down here in a lovely, lovely spot. Charlie, how spectacular is this region? Down here is actually a very phenomenal, oh, oh geez, I can't talk today. <laughs> Down here is actually spectacular, Simon. While we're driving along and here in our brand new Ranger and it's getting filthy dirty, now you've actually brought us to the car wash. This is awesome, thank you. We're crossing over the same river, but there's different features to what we're seeing. variety of vegetation. We started in pine trees and then down to the river here. It's beautiful. We were just blown away because every water crossing just seemed to get more luscious, more green, more water flowing and we were just incredibly surprised. A record? I can say phenomenal. Phenomenal? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I can say phenomenal very comfortably sometimes. 
Lunchtime, we popped the canopy open. This had a couple chicken wraps, keeping it simple, as us males usually do. <laughs> Whether you've got a clear view easy slide or a clear view power slide, having a cage and a cable saver is going to mean that your fridge is protected and your cable's not going to get damaged. All of these accessories are available through trekhardware.com.au. Loaded up the cars with cool drinks and set off up through the mountains heading for the six foot track. We were promised a real challenging track. We've read lots about it, we've done a bit of research, got pretty exciting. We've heard lots of rumours about how aggressive and gnarly it can be for the four-wheel drive. With hopes and dreams of diff locks, skull dragging caravans through the bush, they graded it. And the track's certainly not what it used to be, but which is a nice easy drive so far. A long, long time ago, I'd say around about 25 years ago, we come in here. We remember it was a lot harder. It used to be a track that you could actually drive through over the river and come out the other side, so they've shut all that off. I really didn't run over any speed bumps today. <laughs> to enjoy a trip, you don't always have to be doing heavy four-wheel driving. It's all about the people that you're with and that makes the trip. Part of four-wheel driving is whatever you can throw at us. So towards the end of Six Foot Truck, we came to Cox River. We walked down there and it was stunning. It's giant boulders and it's surrounded by small pine trees that run throughout and the water just rolls through. Nice of it. Wanted to jump in. There was a flying fox that I'm sure Simon would have given a go if it was working. Simon and Honey got a bit of venturous, ended up hopping on some rocks and walking a bit further down than us. Simon, where's Honey? It was well worth it. If you can get up and do the six foot track, you don't need a high skill level. It's all wheel drive, but it is really nice. We met one of the locals who lives nearby. A couple little puppies in tow as well, which was super cute. He's coming out of the bush. He's telling us a story. I'm Kid Carnage. I'm looking after 800 acres over there, mate. So I've been out here for a couple of years now. He was quite excited to meet the big guy. I'll give Simon my phone number and I've only got a little CRV Honda, but I'm prepared to take it to the top of Gibraltar Rock. He's offered us access to his property, lots of tracks up through there. We might take him up on that in a future trip. You meet characters along the way, you always do. Oh no! What the hell are the Piranha Boys doing? Just hearing some funny sounds. Whoa, 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 whoa. The last trip in Flinders Rangers, I did a bead right as the sun was setting. It was giving me a bit of deja vu. Do you reckon they've done a drive shaft? Yep, definitely. <laughs> I've crawled under his car while he's been having a little snooze and I've put some zip ties on his tail shaft. It started with Tristan thinking he's so funny and he would lift my windscreen wipers. I'm going to show you what a real prank is. Broken another CD. <laughs> <laughs> my, my pants, this wasn't my fault. I'll have to leave it here. Simon kept telling me to touch the shaft. I think he has a little crush on me. Get going. Get going. I was under there for about five minutes trying to figure out what was going on. So look along that, you see something that's not quite right. I don't see anything wrong with it because I've never worked on one of these. Simon, honestly, it all looks pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Get going. Get going. You can touch your hand. Yeah, these. Zip, zip ties. ties. Yeah. What do zip ties do it under your car? I don't know. Cut them off. <laughs> what is this goes to show you don't mess around with a mechanic. Tristan and I aren't mechanically minded. I sit behind a desk. Tristan, oh, actually we don't have his name <laughs> what Tristan does yet. I'm going to use these around your arms later, in bed. You win this time, Mike Coleman, but Charlie, we are well and truly coming for you, mate. Every time! Hey, you dirty dogs. Click the like button below and make sure you subscribe. We got up out at Lithgow, headed off down to my uncle Maragul, and it's a protected area, it's fenced, and it's looked after the way it should be by the local landowners. 
We were going to be led by Sharon, who was going to teach us all about the history of the Indigenous people around this area. My name's Sharon Riley. I'm a traditional owner from Rajri country from here around Lithgow. And yeah, I'd like to welcome you to my beautiful country. I'm about to share some important knowledge about our beautiful landscape and the significance of our protected area, Maingamaragu. It's quite an honour to come out and share that knowledge with people so they get the understanding of how to respect our country when they're travelling through it. You've got to come in with good energy and good thoughts and feelings because if you've got anything negative in the back of your mind or you sort of block that, that respect for country, you can leave here but you won't be alone. Every plant in here, every tree, it's got a spiritual connection to us. This one here, that has fruit on it, what we call appleberry. Food source, we feed babies. So it's baby food. Yeah, right. They're really nice to eat. Sharon, she's loaded with knowledge and she was telling us so many cool facts about the land. Fifteen thousand year old cave paintings were a surreal experience. It's just really impressive to see how long they've lasted. Very significant area. So we do a lot of rock art conservation to preserve the art. When I was here about six years ago, we'd met Sharon for the first time, so it's good to see she's still in the same area and doing the same stuff. Other people are doing this tour for the first time. Good for them to hear the history and it's been going on. See them higher ones, they're for more adult, and these hand stencils that come down like this, that means two people getting married. So it's been able to understand what that artwork means. I felt connected to the land again, like I was part of something bigger and more significant than myself. Very humbling experience. When we come round, we see the nice little waterfall, bit of water trickling down. Just that whole area there was so full of life, full of culture, it was so surreal. It was just magical, it was just so, uh, yeah, it was very special. I can understand why Sharon is so keen to preserve it and look after it and be proud of it. Can everyone see this? They're drawing koala. This one here is Engu, and that talks about our lawn structure. Drawings of the landscape of what should be here and part of who the people are from this landscape. Sharon showed us lots of artwork, but also the tea trees, which are unique to the area, which was an amazing experience. We got to crush it in our hands and then drink it with some of the waterfall water. I'll get everyone to grab a little piece, just a little bit. Crush it in your hands, have a smell, and then go down and have yourself a drink of water through your hands with the tea tree. Have a drink, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's really good for you. A little bit like lemony tea, like a weak lemon, but it's, mm, that's it's there and it's still refreshing. fragrant. If you want that ambience, you just want to go somewhere and be connected with nature, this is definitely a great area to do it. It's important to look after our country. That's why we're working on the Indigenous Rangers program. Employ Indigenous Rangers to give more talks and look after country better and that way visitors of the area can be guided more through the ranges and the work that we need to do to look after country. It's important to share that knowledge so people understand why it's so important to us as traditional people from this landscape. So we thank our ancestors for showing us what we've looked at. Mandangua. Next week on Your 4x4, we leave Mayinga Marigu and journey towards the breathtaking views of the Walgan Valley. But on the way, we tackle some tight tracks, rocky terrain, and traverse one of the steepest descents into the valley. Oh no! What the hell are the Piranha Boys doing? Just hearing some funny sounds. We'll have to leave it here. It was a pretty awesome experience to see him getting tugged out in a different way than normal. <laughs>